Okay, so hi there folks, we're going to continue with our batch of videos in uh, science, technology, and society. We're now on the module in the intellectual revolutions that defined society. So as promised in the previous video, we're going to deal with now the ideas of known intellectuals. Okay, so these are one of the three revolutions of divine society. So again, the ideas of known intellectuals. So um, who are these intellectuals that we're going to um, talk about in this video? First, we're going to talk about the Copernican Revolution. Okay, so from Nicholas Copernicus. Then we're going to talk about the Darwinian Revolution from Charles Darwin and the Freudian Revolution from Sigmundus Freud. So let's start off with, of course, the Copernican Revolution. So this is going to be um, a chronological um perspective. So in the 6th uh, century, Ptolemy okay, introduced the geocentric model. This geocentric model, it shows that the earth is the center of the universe, which is of course pretty much this is um, a terrible model because we all know that it's wrong. Okay, Earth is never the center of the universe and um, we the solar system is also not the center of the universe. So it shows that the earth is a center in this geocentric model that Ptolemy um, introduced which was thought to be true actually by most of the people at that time actually this ran from maybe around the century that everybody um, believed that earth is the center of the universe which is of course we all know that it's untrue okay based on everyday science on the modern science that we have now so this copernican revolution um of course this started with nicholas copernicus um um, around 1473 to 1543. Um, this is him. Okay. Um, notice what is on his hand. This is his model. This is what we call the heliocentric model. So Copernicus, Nicholas Copernicus, is an astronomer who contradicts the geocentric model where it says that um, the Earth is the center of the universe. Instead, he proposed his heliocentric theory that planets revolve around the sun. Planets including the Earth revolve around the sun okay so when copernicus introduced this model there's there was a lot of um, heated argument actually um, he was even sent to jail to prison because of his model which contradicts ptolemy's model which was um, thought to be true by everyone during those times so the change from this belief from the geocentric from ptolemy's to the heliocentric model um, which is Copernicus, happened through the contributions of other also important persons in um, astronomy and in science, um, such as um, Brahe, Brahe's observation of the star Cassiopeia. That's one um, contribution that that um, that shows that the heliocentric model is the one which is true. Kepler, uh, Johannes Kepler, stated that the planets move in an elept in elliptical orbits, and the sun is at the center. Which, of course. Um, very much um, true to the heliocentric model. Also, Galileo Galilei developed the telescope, okay, and he observed Venus. And also, Isaac Newton's law of gravity or laws of gravities. Okay, so um, these were um, some of the important persons that helped um, um, contributed to the acceptance of the heliocentric um, model that uh, Copernicus uh, Copernicus introduced. But during those times, during Copernicus' life, it was really not um, not that accepted, okay? Because during that time, Ptolemy is the guy, okay? Ptolemy is the one which is being um, which is being um, accepted. So further, the Copernican Revolution influences conceptual changes in cosmology, religion, physics, and philosophy, and this is again one of these paradigm shifts. Okay, in science, technology, and society. Okay, from the geocentric that the Earth is the center from Ptolemy to the Copernican, which is the Sun is the is the center of the solar system in which we revolve around it, which is of course true um, to our um, which which is um, true to our modern um, observations and science. Now let's go on to the Darwinian revolution. I think this is a very, very um, no name, Charles Darwin. And this is, um, we are now in the area of the United Kingdom. So Charles Darwin um, in 1809 to 1882. Okay, so this is him. Um, he formulated his book on the origin of species in 1859 that presented evidence on how species evolved over time. And his other book, The Descent of Man, 
1871 that introduced the idea of all organic life is under the realm of revolutionary thinking. Okay, so Charles Darwin deepened his, um, he went to the Galapagos Islands in Australia and then observed the, the species there. There's actually, there's a lot of species um, um, in that island that, that was um, based on his name. Okay, because he, he is, uh, uh, he, 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 he tried to discover and unearth a lot of evidences. And from that island, from the Galapagos Islands, he brought home a lot of insights and perspectives, which helped him to have this view in evolution. Okay, further, um, Darwin proposed the theory of evolution. So this is one, um, he proposed this theory of evolution. Though the word evolution is not coined by him, it was coined by um, all scientists before him, but um, he proposed this theory of evolution by natural selection. Okay, so when you say natural selection, if I want to give a brief, a very brief phrase for that, it means survival of the fittest. So where organisms change over time, as a result of changes in heritable physical or behavioral traits. So that's the effect of um, environment to our heredity and to our genes. So by natural selection, if we can survive this, so um, we will exist or we will, or if we want to survive, we must continually evolve. So that's the, the main essence of the theory of evolution by natural selection. The changes that allow an organism to better adapt to its environment can help it survive, as what I have, have been saying, and have more offspring. Okay, so furthermore, the, the, con the, the inverse of this is that if you cannot, um, if you are not evolving for the new change of, therefore you will not exist, you will cease to exist, so therefore you will, um, you will not survive. If you will not put your if you will not, if your your body will not evolve to what should be the fit to the in the future. So that's it. Survival of the fittest by natural selection. Um, there are two. Okay, by Charles Darwin, there are two main points in his theory of evolution by natural selection. Number one, all life on Earth is connected and related to each other. Okay, in order for us to survive, everything is connected. All life is connected and related. Number two. This diversity of life came about just because of the modifications in populations that were driven by natural selection. So um, this emphasizes the power of natural selection and evolution Okay, um, by Charles Darwin. So again, I just want to highlight that when you say natural selection, uh, a very short phrase for that is survival of the fittest. Okay, so that's it. Um, we have first we have talked about the Copernican Revolution. Secondly, we have talked about the Darwinian Revolution. Let's move on a little bit further in the timeline, and we're going to talk about the Freudian Revolution. This is going to be quite short. Um, this is of course from Sigmund Freud, or some call him Sigismundus Freud, um, from 1856 to 1939. So this is his picture. And he is very famous in psychology, of course, educational psychology, in his theory of um, of um, development. Okay, so Freud founded psychoanalysis. So he described that the brain can be segmented into compartments. Okay, that's his theory. He developed an observation of method to study humans' inner life, mainly focuses on human sexuality and evil nature of man. So when you talk about the human sexuality, he has this, uh, he founded this theory of development where we start with the oral stage, anal stage, um, genital stage, and so on. Um, when we talk about his theory of evil nature of man, we have the ego, the id, and the um, superego, where the id is, it talks about the, the animal instinct of man, and the, the superego talks about the morals of man, and ego is the one that balances it all. So um, the Freudian Revolution greatly affected or gave rise to literature, visual arts, and music. Okay, so let us review. We have um, talked about three evolutions here. First up, we have talked about the Copernican Revolution by Nicholas Copernicus from 1473 to 15, uh, 1543. Then we moved on to the Darwinian Revolution. Which, talk, uh, which is um, the proponent is Charles Darwin from 1809 to 1882. And then we moved on to the Freudian revolution, which came, which started from 1856 to 1939. And actually that's the end of this video. Okay, those are some of the ideas of known intellectuals. 
and that is one of the three revolutions that defined the society. Okay, so that's it. Um, thank you very much for watching. Hope you would like this and subscribe, share this to your classmates. And this is just one of the parts of our uh, many videos in the science, technology, and society. So thank you very much. Uh, see you in the next video, which we will, where we will talk about the second one, the information revelation. And then further that, we're going to talk, talk about the cradles of early science. So thank you very much.